This is Miguel Cabacana. He's been harvesting cork like this for 21 years. And before him, his father managed the horses on this Portuguese estate. Not a tree is cut down in this process, one of the most environmentally friendly in the world. It's a precise and highly skilled job. Even the axes are specially designed. And it's not just men like Miguel and Jose Arias who earn a living from cork. After being taken from the tree, it's stored, dried and then shipped to big factories like this one. Every year more than 17 billion cork stoppers are made to supply the international wine market. Here at Suba Centro, one million are produced each eight hour shift. 220 people work here. It's a big employer in this town and throughout Portugal. 50% of northern Portugal's economy is based on cork. Cork stoppers represent more the in value than the port wine exported by Portugal. And the port wine is the Portuguese ambassador. Uh, we have about 12,000 workers directly involved in this business. Cork harvesting has been a way of life in the Mediterranean for at least a thousand years. And it's one of the best examples of a sustainable agroforestry system. That means people benefit by using the many natural resources around them without disturbing or destroying nature. But the cork forests and this way of life are under great threat because people are deserting the countryside. When people leave, the cork oak system falls to pieces. Soil erosion is one problem. As well, with no cattle grazing, grass grows higher, increasing fuel for fires. Also major fire fuel, eucalyptus and pine plantations. Already, as local communities try to find alternative sources of income and take advantage of environmentally damaging EU subsidies, large tracts of land that used to be Mediterranean forest are now plantations. Imagine a desert settling in, in and creeping up into, the, into Portugal and in fact into Europe because this is happening in all the Mediterranean region where you have Mediterranean forests being substituted by non-indigenous species that just suck up you know, water from the soil and all the nutrients and they don't give anything back because they're just not, not the right trees for the conditions, not the soil conditions or the climate. So in my mind, I, I don't want to think about it, but you know, if we don't act now, we, we're in risk of having the desert at our door. Also under severe threat, the Iberian lynx. Found in Spain and Portugal's cork forests, it's one of the world's most endangered big cats with only around 150 left. If there's no more demand for cork, then that's obviously going to be bad news for the cork forests and bad news for the, for the lynx. Because you see, the cork forest exists for a very simple reason, because there is demand for cork. And the most important part of the, the cork market, if you like, is actually the production of bottle stoppers. That's what actually adds value to these forests. And, and the reason they're so important for the lynx is that they have vast expanses of forest. The use of synthetic and screw top stoppers is on the rise. Currently, it's estimated they make up about 8% of around 17 billion corks manufactured every year. If current market trends continue, this figure could rise to more than 30% in coming years. There are fears that if this happens, the cork forests will disappear, and with them, a unique cultural and natural heritage. The message is simple. Buy wine with natural cork. Consumers really do have the power to make a difference.